perfect this scaffolding is perfectly balanced so what we're going to try to do is have both of us lean out this side and grab something and pull it up out this way yeah yeah it'll work it works these guys showed up today with the sign that said we'll work for food somehow they already know how to do a kwanzaa hut <laughs> oh. Oh. unnecessary groan is this thing on it's unnecessary groans. Recliner noises. Yeah, like yesterday I said, it's been really great working with Brock. That was sarcasm. <laughs> hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms. And in this video, I'm going to show you the entire process of building a Quonset hut. That starts with cutting grade into a hillside and prepping the build area and goes all the way through the last arch and actually installing drain lines around the building. But it's not meant to be a how-to video because all of the manufacturers on these buildings make them a little bit different and that affects how you're going to install it. Also, I kind of bought this as a impulse decision without really researching them very much and we didn't know how to put it up. What you're seeing right now is our first attempt at standing up an arch, which totally failed. And over the course of 29 arches, I learned a lot and figured out a system that worked efficiently for us. So let's go back to the beginning of prepping the site and go all the way through. I hope you stick around and enjoy the video. First thing I had to do was mark out the area that the building was going to set and then start clearing everything in the way, which included a lot of debris, but also some large trees. I mentioned that there were two trees that had to come down. The first one you just saw was pretty straightforward. The second tree was completely full of bees. They'd burrowed halfway up the trunk and way underground. So I had to call in some professionals to help me deal with removing those bees. I can look in there and I can see everything. I ended up buying a bee suit and helping, and there were four of us who spent all day doing what we could to save all of these bees. So after getting the trees down and doing our best to save the bees, it was time to start grading the hillside. So I rented a mini excavator, and I hired an experienced operator to run it while I was running the tractor. You might notice that there are still bees everywhere, and we got stung quite a bit that day, but work had to get started.
Next was to cut grade into this hillside. From one corner to the other, there was an elevation difference of about five and a half feet. And our first step in bridging that was to grub off all of the topsoil. My friend did that with the mini excavator, and I was hauling it off with the tractor at the same time. All of the topsoil was saved and later used around the outside of the building. After peeling off all the topsoil, we hit a rock layer, and that rock layer I used as fill. Then after the rock layer, we hit good shale, which worked great for grading out the rest of the pad. All things considered, we spent three days prepping this area and getting it ready for the building. On day three, we started with building the slopes, and we got a nice graded slope, but I later decided it wasn't gradual enough because we were shedding too much water into the building. While you watch this grading, I want to talk a little bit about the numbers and the cost of this entire situation. So I originally bought the Quonset Hut because it was going to be cheaper. And then the next thing was prepping the site could potentially cost a lot more money, maybe as much as the building did. And I didn't want to spend $8,000 to pay a crew of professionals to raise this entire level and haul in dirt. And this is one of the ways I saved a lot of money. By renting an excavator and paying someone to help me do the work, I only spent $1,000. Now fast forward a couple months, and the building is going to be here any day. So we are going back and doing a final grade where there may have been a little bit of settling. And for that, I rented this skid steer from a friend. And at this point, I'd actually ordered my own skid steer, but it didn't come until the building was almost complete. Next thing you see me doing is unloading the actual building off of this truck. And something they didn't tell me until almost time for the building to be delivered is that you have to unload it yourself when they bring it and it weighs about 4,000 pounds. And later the same day, I took delivery of 20 of these giant construction blocks that we used as a foundation to set the building on. And the reason we did that is a Quonset hut has arch sides, and as soon as that arch starts, you lose the ability to stack anything against the walls. And raising it two foot makes the building more usable. I initially got a quote to have two foot tall walls poured for the foundation to set the building on, and that was going to cost me eight to ten thousand dollars, and there's just no way I could pay that once again. So renting this skid loader and buying the blocks the way I did, I spent a little over a thousand dollars. And I will admit that it was kind of a hassle to get these blocks in place and perfectly straight. And I made a couple of mistakes with that, which you'll see in a minute, but we it did make it all work. Obviously, we had the corners of the building staked off, and then we just ran a string between those corners down each side and made sure it was level. And then we just set the blocks off that string, and it worked pretty well. The only problem is I set my blocks based on a measurement for the building size that would have put the wall of the Quonset hut on the inside edge of the block, which is what I wanted to do. The only problem with that is the bottom rail that you set the Quonset hut on has a drip rail and it needs to overhang the edge of the block wall. And what I ended up doing was building these forms on top of my blocks and buying a special kind of quick set, thin set, mortar mix and we basically built a cap on top of the blocks and I could have rented a machine again and moved the blocks but the downsides to that number one we would have had 
the block, the extra width of the block inside of the building taking up space. And the second problem is it's hard to get these blocks, which are all irregularly shaped, it's really hard to get those completely level. And by building these forms, we were able to get it completely level and it only took a day of work and I spent a few hundred dollars on concrete mix. Once all that was done, I just had to knock off a little bit of the excess with a grinder and an air hammer. And then my rail set perfectly and had a place for the water to run off. None of this is by the book or recommended by the Quonset Hut company or anything else. This is just me figuring out something on the spot that would work. And it did work really well in my opinion. The last thing to do before actually putting up arches was to dig a drain line it all the way around the building so that when we got rain it did not flood into the building. I said that was the last thing, but actually I spread about 30 or 40 tons of crushed limestone inside the building before we went any further, just to make sure it didn't get too muddy in here while we were working. I'm out here again today to work on getting the Quonset hut put up. The biggest goal that I have for today is to get the bottom track bolted on. As we're working on that and taking our measurements, we're also kind of speculating what's the best way to get these arches up. The instructions in the book and all the videos I've seen are standing these up with the ends on the ground. And you're pulling from above and maybe leveraging with some poles or two by fours from below. And I feel like that's not that difficult of a task. The problem here is I'm not setting mine on the ground, I'm setting it on a two foot wall. So we've decided to go ahead and put an arch together, see how heavy it is, see if we're gonna be able to lift the ends up there and then use that same plan, or if we're gonna have to alter it so that we're prepared for the day we stand all these arches. First thing we're gonna do is bolt one arch together. So I'll bring you over here and show you how they go together. So each one of these joints has 18 bolts with square headed nuts and there's a rubber washer on each bolt and I've already started putting it together backward because obviously as rain runs down you're gonna want this inside of here so you're not running rain down in between your arches so and that'll continue all the way the top arch being on top and just work down the sides that way it's staggering how many bolts came with this there are four five gallon buckets completely full to the top with these bolts. 18 per joint, seven panels per arch, 29 arches. All right, they recommend putting down caulking under this. I got this mastic, it's like a putty. I think it's gonna do a better job of sealing in between the bottom rail and the concrete. We're, we're gonna put some caulking in between there too, but I think this is gonna seal up pretty well. Lined up on that X first. Make sure we're on uh -oh. top line. We're not there. Oh, yeah. okay. I was looking at, only looking at the front. I did too, evidently. It wasn't as deep as I thought. I'll go all the way. Grab another one and we can set that depth stop again. So, 
This is what we're going to use to pull the arch up. We're going to slide these, this through one of the bolt holes, put a nut on it, and tie a rope to this and use it to pull from on top of that scaffolding. This is the same clip you saw at the start of the video where we completely failed. I'd seen some videos of people trying to stand arches up with a similar method to this and thought this was going to work, but this was really not a failure, it was a learning experience. First lesson is these arches are flimsy. They bend and flop around and if it was rigid, it would be a lot easier. But since it's not, it's critical that each of your ends is held still at the bottom in some way. And if you're building this on the ground, you can push it up against any kind of a stop and have a leverage point, but we're building ours up on a two foot platform. That also meant that my makeshift scaffolding that I was trying to use wasn't tall enough, so we had to upgrade that as well. I made a separate video for every single day that we worked on this, and that ended up being like 12 days for 29 arches. And the number one question that people brought up is why I didn't rent a scissor lift. And I think even with a scissor lift, it would have taken us eight days or so to do this, and my help was not available every day so I would have had to rent it for a month and that just doesn't make sense to me so even though this video that you're seeing right now didn't work and it was a it was a mess we learned from it pretty quickly and we got a better system figured out a system that worked just using the equipment I already have we're back out here to work on standing up the Quonset hut yesterday we tried to stand up full arches but no matter how we supported it, it was trying to bend and flex and we're standing it up on two foot walls and it just wasn't working out. A lot of people have given me suggestions for better ways to do it, but I don't have to solve the problem of standing up full arches because we can just stand up half arches. And that's what we're going to try. And if that works well, there's no reason to solve the other problem. So we're all going to jump back on the struggle bus and see if we can get this sucker put up. All aboard! So, We've got a hay wagon with the scaffolding strapped to it, and then we strapped an IBC tote to that. Probably doesn't look all that safe, but I feel like it's really secure, honestly. We've been trying to decide the best way to lift the arches. We have a couple different theories on what that's gonna be, so we're just gonna try them all and see how that works. Plan number one is to leverage the bottom up against the base and pull it up with a rope like this. So, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Now, I don't know what's going to happen here in a minute when it breaks over. Because I really don't have any control over it. Okay. Hold it from going forward, you guys. If you can. Perfect. The way they bow now. Tell me. <laughs> Isn't that the most beautiful thing you ever saw? Yeah, I'm Billy. The most beautiful thing you ever saw. Billy looks good. The arch is even better, except it's got like three foot of overlap. Still has to be pulled out like this, but we're moving forward. Right now, we're going to tie off in both directions to both arches so that they can't fall as we get them lifted all the way up. And then we'll use two buys to walk it up and then just lift. I'm gonna be lifting, I'm gonna walk this back. Oh. It really took us probably five or six arches just to get an idea of how we wanted to do it. The first two arches, as you can see, we built in sections. Then we really didn't do that again, maybe one more time the rest of the way. Up until you get at least four or five arches, you have to support them because they're still 
pretty fragile, and it was windy out here while we were working. We also, after a few arches, we did away with the idea of, of having a scaffolding and ladders and using this wagon as a platform. It actually was a really stable way to do it, but it was a pain to move it side to side. You just saw me with a crew of people put up the first two arches on a Sunday. The following day, I didn't have anyone to help, and I wanted to try to put up some arches myself if I could, and that's tough. The next thing I found out is the difficulty of working by yourself is not really in getting the panels in place. It's reaching around to hold both sides of the bolt. And that was really difficult at ground level and almost impossible up 16 foot high at the peak. So I found one more person who could help me finish this arch. And I could have easily just taken today off from the building since I didn't have any help. But the problem is we had a big windstorm coming with up to 50 mile an hour winds and there's no way I could leave just two arches up. And even leaving three arches up would have been sketchy. After this day, we figured out our routine for standing up full arches. But in the meantime, I had to keep it from blowing away. So what I decided to do was go ahead and concrete the bases in. The instructions that came with the building tell you that you want to concrete every one of the openings at the base of the wall and that kind of solidifies it and weighs it down. But you're not supposed to do that until the building is done. But I didn't feel like I had the option to wait. So I concreted these three arches and then I braced it in multiple places. So far it seems like the best thing I've done that's helped stabilize this was putting these vertical 2x4s in to push up on the middle of the arch. So if that's where we're getting all that support, I'm going to hook right next to those with the same eyelets I've been using and pull straight down. And I think that's going to help. And then I'm going to redo the way we've tied off in each direction. This is uh, about as good as it gets. I got a hood for a pillow. I just take a nap right here. And the goal today is to get some arches put up. And I would like to establish that we can stand up full arches so that whenever maybe I'm the only one here, I can just build arches. And when I get help, we stand them up. But until we do that, I don't want to get too many arches built. Right now there's only two of us, and I think it's a minimum of three, but preferably four people to stand arches. So I'm going to see if I can get some more help out here, and in the meantime we're going to get a couple arches ready, and hopefully have a productive day. This was our first time successfully standing up a full arch. And the main difference here was that there was another arch for the bottom to push against, and we have one person securing each side. Hang on. so that actually went fairly well we've done it the piece by piece or the half arch method and now we've done the full arch I think if you've got the people for it the full arch is the best method in my mind so now it's gonna be a tedious process I think we're gonna have two people putting bolts along the arch and then two people building the next arch
did we hold the ends there last time? I think this day we were able to get three full arches up with four people in about five hours. Not too bad, but you can see we're fighting right now with the ends not staying in place. And I'm thinking within another day or so of working on it, we solved that problem. I'm going to get a thousand more suggestions on easier ways to put the arch up, but I was very happy with the way we end up doing it. And I don't think a complicated rigging with the tractor is necessary. Seems like the number everyone said is that once you get four arches up, you're pretty solid. But this is four arches and it's all over the place. Five, yeah. This is five arches and it's moving all over the place. Actually standing each arch up takes about one minute and it takes about 20 or 30 minutes to build an arch. The time consuming part is going back through and getting all the bolts put in the arch after it's standing up. That takes an hour. The reason it takes so long is that each arch is connected to the previous arch by 156 bolts with nuts and they are spanning all the way along this arch and the center of the arch is 16 foot high. So you can't tighten all the bolts down as you go. You have to leave them loose so that you can still kind of wiggle the, the new arch around to get it to line up with the holes. So you have to access each of these bolts from the top and from the bottom twice. And no matter what we tried different ways to do it, that's just time consuming. And it ended up being basically the most effective thing we found was to have two ladders that could be more easily moved and a taller scaffolding for the middle. We need a deep well socket, but instead we're going to use The last day we worked on standing up arches, we got three arches. We got a routine for how to assemble them and stand them up. But the most time consuming part was going all the way along the arch, tightening up the bolts that hold the two arches together. And the system we had, there was no way to do that faster because we only had one way to reach the top. So there's still an opportunity to improve our setup. So we've spent the first three hours today putting together a new scaffolding and changing the way we're doing our ladders and trying to make this quicker. So today may not be the most productive day we've had, but I think it's going to set us up to maybe get five arches in a day next weekend instead of three. Yep, I guess we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> you were the weakest link last time, Gabe. Your knee squeezed in and up against that other one. 
The biggest struggle we've had is how flexible these arches are and how they don't hold their shape and it's hard to get the ends pinched together. You can see we're fighting right now with the ends trying to get away. And our solution this morning was to tie a string across the bottom to keep it from spreading out. Well, that didn't work, but it led us to the next idea, which actually did work and is what made the rest of the build easier. So we're getting a pretty good routine of standing up arches. The only problem we still have is sometimes the ends want to get a little too wide or fall off here. We were thinking if we had a pivot point right here that we could bolt an arch to, that would take all that struggle out of it because actually lifting is not that hard. So we've got something makeshift here with just some boards that are uh, held onto the block wall with tap cons. And we have a bolt here. We're gonna test out a pivot point. And if this works, we'll probably try to come up with a little bit more solid version of this. We kept having trouble with the arch on the left side pushing off of the platform. And of course, once we made this change, it pushed off the other side. But it was a proof of concept. put that back up or not? Hold on. Keep it there. Let's stand the arch up. All right. I would love to be out here standing up a bunch of these arches, but everybody that I've got who can help me works during the week. So we've mainly been getting the most work done on the weekends, but I'm gonna see if I can change that by establishing a pivot point out here on the end, on both ends, that I can bolt the arch to this and stand it up with less help. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting this arch together I'm gonna get the other one of these pivot stands built on the other side, and then we'll get moving. I got a little bit over ambitious here and decided that by having both ends of this secured, maybe I could stand up full arches by myself or with one person helping. Because you probably do need that one helper because you can't put all the bolts in yourself. At this point, I've went as far as I can go by myself, so I grabbed Cooper out of the shop to help me push the arch up. And if all it takes a second person for is shoving this part up, then I can accomplish a lot more throughout the week. Doing it this way and failing to do it this way really doesn't have anything to do with the arch being heavy. So having something to lift it higher in the center doesn't solve the problem. We're lifting the center just fine. So having a higher reach tractor or something like that doesn't solve it because both ends are flexing and the, the arches just aren't strong enough to not be supported on both sides. I got it up about 90% and then you'll see it start to flex and twist and we lost it. It bent one panel but we were able to fix it and we used it the following day. For me, this was a lesson learned. 
that you really need three people to stand up full arches and if you want to do it with less than three you've got to do it one piece at a time or you've got to build some kind of a complicated cradle to lift the arches with. Using that angle iron as a pivot point is the biggest thing we've figured out so far to make this easier. Tying the ropes like this also helped a lot, except on the first one, we didn't get the two ropes evenly spaced and it had us pulling more on one side than the other. Once we retied that, it came up more in a straight line on the rest of the arches. What you've seen to this point has been a lot of trial and error, making mistakes, figuring it out, and now is the point where I would say we have a routine down. This day, we stood up six arches in six hours, primarily working with four people. And once again, the only real limitation time-wise is how long it takes to go back through and put all the bolts in. I've done a heck of a lot of talking up to this point. Let's just watch some arches be put up and Listen to Bo the Drifter. Man, I always had stories about the city life and the crazy nights. I figure I should probably give it a try. Baby, check it out. See what it's all about. But the traffic was fast and the money was slow. People I met you never get to know I kind of miss this place I used to live back home Cause up here it's pregnant Paycheck, rat race, what's next? I'm tired of feeling like a small fish in a big pond I think I go back where I came from Where everybody knows my name My friends are still the same Try to change your mind, trying to save your time. In case you're thinking about breaking out the bucket list, girl, you can skip this funny business. Cause up there it's complicated and overrated. Down here everything is understated. That's all right by me. I got everything that I need. But there is pregnant, paycheck. All right, the concrete's here. This is my son-in-law, Brandon. Hey, by the way, if you're in the Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma area, O'Brien's is the place to get your concrete. And if you need anything at all, concrete or rock related, I'll put Brandon's personal cell phone number in the comments and in the description. Just call him day or night, he'll take care of you. All right, let's go, Brandon, let's go.
Well, we got a break in the rain for the first time in two weeks. I thought I'd show you how good the grass is coming in right here. I think it's been maybe two and a half weeks since I ran the Harley rake over this and then planted all this grass seed. Coming in pretty good. So the building's basically been done for a couple months now. And it's been a fantastic resource for me to be able to keep equipment out of the elements. And, you know, maybe if it's raining, I go up in there and do some mechanic work. I fixed my mower deck in there the other day. And I still have to put end walls on it, so it's not quite done. But overall, my experience with it is it was a lot more work than I expected it to be. But... I think it's going to be worth it. These buildings are really durable. It should last a long time. It was a lot cheaper than a pole barn. And pole barns are hard work too. So I paid $17,000 for the building. And if you add up all the cost, including site prep, equipment rental, paying people to help, tools, materials, everything, maybe $22,000 for a building that is 30 foot wide, 60 foot long, 16 foot high in the center. I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. You should see links on the screen to more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.